begin this morning with some breaking news in the Sandra Bland case. There's been a settlement reached between uh, Walla County officials and the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, I got a call last night from Bland family attorney, Cannon Lambert, with regards to this case. We, of course, are about to get him on the phone in just one second. You might recall Sandra Bland, a Chicago woman who was in Prairie View, Texas, where she was uh, driving on campus there to start a new job job uh, in that particular city when all of a sudden she was pulled over by a Texas Department of Public Safety uh, trooper. That particular trooper uh, pulled her over and then when he asked her, when he asked her to, when he asked her to uh, get out of her car, actually put out her cigarette, that's when he then said, get out and begin to arrest her. You're watching the video here. This is the video that took place uh, there when uh, she was in jail, taken to the jail. Uh, supposedly, the the uh, folks in the jail were supposed to check on her every hour per the law there, but they actually didn't. They actually didn't. Uh, and so then her body was then found uh, there in her jail cell. Uh, the uh, medical examiner ruled that Sandra Bland uh, died of a suicide. Her family uh, sued Walla County. They also sued, uh, they also sued officials uh, with the state. That officer, Brian Encina, he actually was fired by the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, but the grand jury declined to indict him. Uh, in Prairie View, in Prairie View, uh, they actually, uh, th there's a memorial there. These are photos that I actually shot when I was in Prairie View just a couple of weeks ago. This is the spot uh, where Sandra Bland uh, was actually arrested. Uh, you also see, uh, again, there are, there are photos out there. There are photos out there uh, as well. Also, Prairie View A&M uh, uh, created this, a Sandra Bland Parkway on that street street where she was actually uh, discovered, uh, where she was actually arrested in Sandra Bland Parkway. And they also, they also, plan, also plan on, they also plan on uh, building a park uh, there in Prairie View uh, as well. And so it looks like now we have uh, Bland family attorney, Cannon Lambert, uh, as well as Sandra Bland's uh, mother uh, as well. Uh, Cannon, first of all, thank you for joining us. So please explain, please, please explain to us, Cannon, uh, what is the breaking news in this case? Uh, um, that you called me about last night. Well, listen, I have to tell you, we're happy to report that um, we were able to bring a resolution that Ms. Geneva was happy to, uh, to be a part of. Uh, this is a real warrior that's sitting next to me. Uh, one of the things that she made sure of is that she demanded that there were three basic uh, changes that had to take place associated with this settlement. Uh, one, first and foremost, they're going to be using electronic wand systems at that jail so that no more falsification of records can ever take place. And that's all because of her. That's all because of her. Um, but in addition to that, they're going to make sure that they have nurses on staff that are going to be there at all shifts. And then in addition to that, uh, they're going to be looking to approach legislatures, uh, leg legislators to try and bring about some substantive change that we're going to be a part of as well. Uh, well, Geneva, well, first of all, was there also a financial settlement with uh, the with Walla County in the state of Texas? Yes, there was. Yeah, we, we were able to resolve the case for $1.9 million in total. Uh, the $100,000 is from DPS, which is the maximum under state law by the TTCA uh, that the DPS is uh, uh, able to provide, but then the $1.8 million will be coming from Waller County, uh, the jail. Uh, Geneva, your thoughts about this? It surely has been very difficult uh, for you and your family. Uh, there's so much attention uh, all across the country on this particular case as well. Um, why was it so important for you not to solely have a financial settlement, but to have these other changes? Number one, I want to say good morning, Roland. Thank you for having us on. And I want to say the blood still works. <laughs> I'm excited about what God has done here. Uh, the importance for me was the fact that all across the nation, nobody has been addressing these uh, uh, deaths that have been occurring. And so it was important that we have something put in place to say, no, we're not going to operate with business as usual anymore. No, we're really going to make some real changes that we know will make a difference in the lives of many others. I can't bring Sandy back. She's not coming back, but I gotta tell you, there will be lots of lives saved and changed with this new agreement. 
Uh, there are other uh, cases all across the country where individuals have died uh, in local jails. Are you also uh, looking to try to make this uh, a, a national initiative as well? I mean, you made it clear that uh, that as a result of this, uh, you now will be speaking for Rosandra. Are you hoping that other states will require these uh, th these sort of uh, requirements in their local jails? I am not hoping only, I am praying feverishly, and hopefully this will be a nationwide effort. And I say that because nationwide, we've been losing lives for a very long time. So why not have it a nationwide effort to change the way that we do things? This is not, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. This is absolutely. not the end, this is the beginning. This and, is the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited this morning, God is good. Uh, well, we certainly appreciate both of you uh, reaching out to us. Uh, this is a story that we have uh, paid attention to uh, from the beginning. And, uh, of course, uh, Geneva, when you and I chatted, uh, it was last year, Congressional Black Caucus, uh, yes, you told me that uh, Sandra uh, always said uh, her desire was uh, to be on my show one day. Uh, and That's unfortunately, right. it was uh, in, in this way. I know it's unfortunate, but I tell you what, it's right on time. It's in God's timing. And I say thank you, Roland, because you have been great and following the story and keeping it out there among the people. So as I tell everybody across the world, it's not just about Sandy, it's about all of the millions of mothers in this movement. And you are going to see some real change. All right, Geneva, Cannon, we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank yes, sir, so much, thank sir. you. All right, then. Uh, quickly, I want to go to our panel here uh, to talk about this here, of course. Uh, Jameer Burley, of course, uh, who works with uh, the millennial side of the Clinton campaign. Uh, we also have uh, Liz joining us as well, Liz Copeland. And plus, we have Avis Jones de Weaver, leadership strategist. Folks, real quick, uh, your thoughts about this particular uh, settlement and the fact that it's not just money, it's actual changes in that local jail. It's revolutionary. Uh, I don't remember seeing a case like this where we've had settlements that have gone beyond uh, just the monetary settlement. And this is absolutely necessary. As Sandra's mother mentioned, Sandra unfortunately is not the only person to die in custody under very suspicious circumstances. And having to make sure that there is some electronic verification of what's going on so that records can't be falsified, which is apparently what happened in this case, as well as making sure that there is nurses, there are nurses on staff 24 hours a day in case something happens. Hopefully, uh, nurses will be called in uh, if people actually check on people when they're supposed to. And so these are at least changes that I do believe will save lives in the future, and I certainly hope that it'll be replicated across the country. Yeah, Mrs. Bland's mother, I think, is a true inspiration for someone who's been able to take a tragic incident like this and really push forward to find systematic changes, not just financial um, compensation for um, the murder of Sandra Bland. What I'm hoping is that this, this will represent around the country where we can find additional accountability mechanisms and we can also um, create better relationships with the police officers and members of the community that can hopefully prevent this from happening again. Yeah, I would like to piggyback off of that, especially coming from Baltimore, my hometown, and with the Freddie Gray trials and the settlement that occurred there. I think we're talking about people's lives and not just their rights, but everyone has a right to be safe and protected, even in police custody. Mm -hmm. We should have national standards, and I don't think that this is a, a party issue, it's not a race issue, it's about Americans, and we definitely need to make sure that people are safe. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.